the members of the team, it's Leticia Savelli from Schema Business School, Julie Pesang from University of Dassou, and who is talking now, Matthias Grisostomo, from University of Dassou as well. Okay, so in our outline, we are gonna present first a little bit the introduction, then we're gonna talk and explain about the methods that we use for this uh, project that we are presenting you. We are gonna discuss the approach and the results after that. And for close as well, we are gonna conclude. Okay, first of all, the project that we did, it was on Leran Island. As you know, Leran Island, it's in front of the Can Bay. It's 20 minutes by boat, which is like a characteristic of this place because the only, uh, the only thing that you can do to arrive there, it's using boats. You cannot go by car, by bike, or anything. So this is an important point because the, um, in, the, in the last years, the persons who arrive to the island is being increasing the number, okay? So every time it's being more and more people visiting the island. Why? Because it's really interesting, as you know, uh, St. Marguerite and St. Honorat, they have uh, the, the story about the man of the iron mask, so it can be like super attractive to many persons to go there. Also because you have the monastery, which is quite uh, nice, and uh, they have wine yards as well, as you know, <coughs> really good rosé, so it's a good for to spend the weekend there. Um, okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about our project. Uh, as I mentioned before, the human activities is gonna have a really good, uh, um, it's gonna be a huge impact, but we'd, uh, we, we just like, we're not gonna talk about that in this uh, presentation, but we have to know it, because it's gonna be a really important part of uh, what we are gonna discuss. Okay, so we are gonna link species and substrate and years. We choose three years, which is like 2013, 15 and 18. Why we choose these years? Because on the data that we collect, we, we thought that it was the strongest year with the data. For example, in the last year, 2019, as you know, we had a, a little bit of problems to collect the data because of the weather, so it was not really clear. Uh, so that's why we decided to choose 2018 and not 19, for example. Here, as you can see, the species that we choose, it's Sarpa salpa and Coris julis, just those two species, one ras and one sea bream, okay? And the substrate that we choose is Posidonia rocks and sands. Why we choose Posidonia rocks and sands? Because on the study that we realized, because this is the, the data collection, it's from 2012. So we start to analyze all the years, and we realized that most of the 50%, these three substrates are present in all the years. Okay, why we choose these species? Because they are the frequently observed species, like the more frequently observed species among all the years. We did the comparison since 2012 until 2019, and the biggest uh, number of uh, species that you can see is these two, okay? Now we are gonna talk a little bit more about the methods. How we did it? As you know, we got like the weight, with the balloons, so we designed the transects. But I have to make an declaration on this point, because the transect, it's a little bit subjective. Why subjective? Because it's not in the same point every year. We try it, even with GPS, but for example, you don't know if it's gonna be like five meters more there or five meters to the other side. Also, the transect is 10 meters long, so you have to understand that it's not gonna be just the 10 meters that you're gonna try to watch, because you have also a little bit of space to the right side and to the left side. So the idea was like just making rounds for a few times and try to count as many species as we, as we can. Also, if try to count if there was like Posidonia, rocks, sands, or pebbles. We exclude pebbles as the, as the same reason that I told you before, because it, it was not so strong on the data collection, okay? Um, also, I have to say that the transects, many times, for example, in one point, you have the transect, but you have on the left side Posidonia, and on the right side, you have a sand or rocks. So you can put uh, both uh, kind of substrate. So it's gonna be like a, a little bit uh, uh, not so clear, but we try to do it the best as we can. Uh, <laughs> now, it, uh, Julie, it's gonna talk a little bit more about the approach. So let me present you the approach. So our main question is, is the species distribution linked to substrate? And for this, first, we want to have an overview of the data, so of the substrate distribution, 
and of the species distribution to see there is clearly different zones where there is only one substrate. Uh, same for the species, are they in cohabitation or are they living in two different zones? So we want to have a first overview on this. After, we're going to try to answer the question. We can be rephrased as, is the species have a preference between substrates? And at the end, because we did the mean of those three different years, we want to make sure that during all those years, the proportion of the substrate was quite the same, because if we have big changes, then it's going to kind of alter the study. And same for the species number. So here is the overview on the substrate distribution. In green, we have Posidonia on the, on the gray rocks and on yellow sand. And when we have seen the, the, the substrate only one year, it's going to be a little dot, two years a bigger a medium one, and three years the, the bigger one. So here we can see if there is in some places there is defined zones, like for example in the arbor area, there is a lot of sand, or in this place there is only rocks. It's still quite mixed. We don't have really clear zones where there is only Posidonia or only rocks or only sand. So it can be a little bit tricky to, uh, to define uh, the preference. And here for the species distribution, we have put it in red, Sarpa Salpa, in blue, Chorus Julis, and in purple, when we can find both species. So we can see that there is a lot of purple dots, meaning they are not really in distinct habitat, they are sharing habitats. And also it seems there is more blue, so an abundance of Chorus Julis for sure. So here, with those two maps, it seems like it's going to be difficult to define if one species prefer one substrate because it's so mixed all around the island that we need to do a test to define this. And to proceed to this, he sorry, here, we have decided to do the, the distribution of the substrate all around the two islands. So we know that around the island we have approximately 18% of sand, 34% of Posidonia, and 48% of frogs. And if this species does not have a preference in one substrate, we expect that its distribution is going to be approximately the same. So we have looked on the field and we have seen that for Sarpa Salpa, for example, it's this. So it's a little bit less of sand and more Posidonia and rocks. Because we cannot really define that if there is a clear difference, even if we see that, we are doing a statistical test, which is called a chi-square chi test, which showed us that there were a significant difference. So they don't have the expected distribution meaning they, are prefer, they prefer a substrate, which is, in our case, they, pref we, they would prefer Posidonia and rocks over than sand. We did the same for Chorus Julis, and it was even more clear because we can see there is a lot, a, re a real preference on, I mean, we can see they seem to prefer rocks and other than Posidonia and sand, where it's less abundant. And according to the statistical test, it was also significant. So here it seems like they don't really like sand, so we might think that with human activities, with pollution and uh, anchoring, if they remove Posidonia and uh, like destroy rocks, it might have an impact on them. That's why we did this study. But we don't know. I mean, that's not our main study. We're just making an hypothesis. For the replication, then, we want to make sure that all, during all the years, the proportion of the substrate was approximately the same. So we can see here in 2013, 15, and 18, always with sand, rocks, and Posidonia. At first, it seemed it was quite the same, and the, statistic, the statistical test showed us it was non-significantly different. Considering the species number, here we have the species number, so not proportion, of Sarpa Sarpa and Corrige Julis, we can see and see that there is a difference in 2015. So we did the test, and it showed us that for Chorus Julis, actually, this is significantly different. So we did some, uh, we tried to know why. Maybe, we don't know, but maybe it's because of environmental condition or interspecific, interspecific interaction, but we need to, to go deeper in the studies. And also, we have, we have seen in a box plot that we have a big uh, outliers in uh, this here. So maybe it's why it's so high. So... Now, Matthias is going to conclude. Okay. For conclude, a little bit, um, it's going to take, uh, it's going to be like a little bit long conclusion, but we can say that Sarpa Salpa and Chorus Julis, they're quite different because for Chorus Julis, as Julie says before, there are significant differences. So we can say that Chorus Julis prefer 
uh, rocks. You have a really preference, and it's not the same among the years. It's been switching. But Sarpa Salpa, it's been the same among the years, and the substrate is not really seems to switching on the places as well. The Sarpa Salpa prefers rocks and Posidonia as well. So that's why we put here on the graphics, like the sizes of the indifferent, and I mean the, the circles in different sizes. Also here, we have the arrow, as Julie says before, maybe the substrate can uh, have changes on time because of the human activities, like anchoring or uh, uh, fishing or many things that they're gonna destroy the substrate or they're gonna switch it, at least Posidonia. For example, if I put the anchor down, probably when I remove it, I'm gonna remove pieces of Posidonia as well. And as I said before, the island every time is getting more and more visitors. As you can see it, like not only small boats, big boats as well, so the impact probably is gonna be high. But we have to go deeper in that kind of study. And for um, make an, an improvement in our study, what we can do, we can increase the sampling effort, of course, and we can increase the time scale. Thanks for listening.